Good morning. <coughs> Good morning, everybody. Uh, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here in Bratislava. Uh, my name is Mikko Annala. I'm the head of governance innovation in the Nordic think tank called Demos Helsinki. Uh, I would like to start uh, with a question. Which one of you are married? Okay. And which one of you who are married did some dating before you got married? Come on, you did some dating. <laughs> Why is that sensible? <coughs> well, because se dating is a very low cost way of finding out if your relationship actually works before you commit to it for the lifetime. So <coughs> my thinking is that the Finnish government at the moment is, has been learning the value of dating. While it's doing that by starting to systematically use the uh, the tool of experimentation in policy making. The Finnish government has just elevated experimentation to the highest political agenda in the country, which is the government program. I'm going to tell you why it has been happening, how it ha has been happening, what kind of benefits there are to come, and what kind of challenges there are. It's important to understand that I don't work inside the government myself. I represent the think tank that is a non governmental organization, it's a non profit, a project based organization. But we work closely with the Prime Minister's office in Finland and also with other Prime Minister's offices abroad. So I'm going to tell you my, my perspective and our experiences on our collaboration here. You're probably thinking, what is experimentation? I'm going to try to explain you this uh, through an example. You are probably quite well known, uh, you know this uh, conversation about the future of work pretty well. It was uh, started maybe five years ago uh, when a couple of researchers noticed that the economic downturn of 2008 uh, had actually made the companies to realize that, hey, we can actually automate quite many of these jobs today. Uh, these researchers, they concluded that, hey, because artificial intelligence, robotization, automation is, is rapidly developing all the time, the, the clear conclusion would be that actually so many, many, many of the jobs that we have at the moment are going to disappear in the very couple of decades. We are talking about figures like 20%, 40%, or even 60% of the current jobs that are existing at the moment could be disappearing. Well, Barack Obama, at his very uh, the late term, late second, second term, he took a step forward, and he actually said that this is even bigger than that. It's not only about jobs, it's about how our social compact. We need to be rethinking how we actually connect our individuals in a meaningful way to the society. What if the labor is not the way of doing that anymore? What if the wealth is going to accumulate to very few because of they own, for example, artificial intelligence or robotics devices? He said that the idea of basic income is going to be harder and harder to refuse in the future. Basically means, basic income means giving away free money for citizens without expecting them to do anything. So under unconditional free money. It's a radical idea. This has also been a big topic in Finland, mm, and a couple of years ago something started happening. Many of the international papers, uh, big ones like BBC um, among of them, started uh, letting out news stories and saying Finland is now implementing basic income giving free money to all of its citizens. This was mostly true. There was only one mistake in these uh, news stories. This mistake was that basic income is not being implemented in Finland. It's an experiment. So experimentation, now I try to come down to the topic, what is experimentation in public sector? At best, it can be a vehicle. It can be a tool for government to explore the unknown. So if you think about basic income, it's too risky to fail. If we give a lot of money for every citizen and unconditionally, and what if they get passivated? What if nothing happens? It's, it's, it's very bad for the society. It's bad for the individuals as well. But in this experiment, the Finnish government is giving basic income for 2,000 people for two years. So for a limited time, limited scope. To try to see and uh, measure reliably how does it actually influence these people? Whether they get employed more, if they get more active because they don't have to use time for, for example, bureaucratic course or something else, happen, else happens. So this is just one example of the policy experimentation that's ongoing in Finland right now. You can also uh, define policy experimentation in more broader terms. This is quite, uh, 
quite broad definition. It's something, it's an activity that is tied to the policy objectives. Uh, there's uncertainty of the outcome. This is very crucial. You don't know how it's going to turn out. That's why you experiment. It's a temporary activity. Experiments don't last forever. There's a limited scope. So don't experiment with all the, all the society, experiment with a limited amount of people. And you need to have a possibility to learn, possibility to evaluate whether it works or not. I think if there's one thing that you want to remember from this uh, presentation, it's that uh, if you fail with policy, you don't call it an experiment. It's not the same thing. Experimentation is something intentional. It's something that you decide that, okay, I will try it out before I actually scale, scale it out in big, uh, in big scope. If I even scale it, I need to see if it works or not before that. So <coughs> I've been working with a couple of different governments and trying to transform them policy, policy making functions from planning towards experimenting. These are a couple of things that need to happen if you want to make it, make it happen in, in, in reality. So you start moving from long-lasting planning towards fast iterations. So you do plan, but once you have planned a little bit, you start doing and learning from your doings. You, this is the second one is a mindset thing. You, you don't avoid failures anymore. This is a big thing everywhere. Of course, we don't want to fail. But in experimentation, you start taking use of failure. You start systematically understanding why you failed. You start writing it down, reporting it, and then developing your work on the basis of that. You're not trying to reach certainty anymore. You are starting a dialogue with uncertainty. You, work, you don't work inside sectors. You go towards ecosystems. In experimentation, you almost always you need partners. It can be also an efficient vehicle for collaboration between private sector and public sector. Evaluating, you don't do it after you have implemented the policy, you do it continuously during the policy making cycle. These are some of the biggest, biggest changes in this policy making transformation. Well, experimentation is not a new thing. Uh, there has been, uh, I would say, a kind of big uh, new wave of experimentation emerging already about 10 years. Uh, players like, we have somebody from the behavior insights team speaking after me. Uh, players like the BIT and a couple others, they have already shown that experimentation can be hugely beneficial for public sector. They have shown that you can save hundreds of millions of euros of taxpayers' money by just trying out what works before, before you scale it up. Uh, I, I would say that there are a couple of limitations if the government doesn't have experimentation in their toolkit. I wrote them down there. So there are potential, but often too risky, initiatives that are left unexplored if you don't have experimentation, if you don't have that safe space for experimentation existing in your toolkit. You know the crazy idea of basic income. Why to implement the whole thing? Because it's so risky. But what if it is the best solution that there is? This gives you kind of a middle ground where you can test it in small scale. Failing, secondly, failing policies, they live too long and failing services because we don't know how well they work. If you don't experiment, you don't know. A lot of time is spent on planning. Nowadays, times are changing faster than ever. It was shown in the many presentations before this. It's impossible in many contexts. For example, if it includes digitalization, it's impossible to plan everything. It's impossible to plan the next 10 years. You need to start building the future. Experimentation is a very good tool for that. Let me share a couple words about the Finnish context. Uh, to my understanding, Finland is the only country where experimentation is at the highest political agenda. It's a policy. The government is using it for a certain set of policy initiatives. So why it happened? Uh, five years ago, the very highest uh, civil servants and politicians in Finland, they made a report and they had identified that the big machine of the government, how the policy making actually runs, need to be updated. They concluded that we need to start moving from detailed plans toward more strategic initiatives, not to try to plan everything out in the beginning, but to give broad direction. Move from top-down approach to collaboration, ecosystem, uh, interaction. And thirdly, add more evaluation points, add more monitoring, see if you are failing or not or already in the beginning, not after 10 years. That's, like, that's the big thing that they noticed that was lacking in the Finnish government. Well, 
my uh, team was commissioned by the PMO to work uh, to work with the P, uh, work with this, and they basically wanted to know what kind of experimentation model would would be suitable for the Finnish context. We did this uh, the model by interviewing the best experts in the world, and we already found out that there were very functional, very good experimentation models existing in the world. At the same time, we did this conclusion that uh, these models were mainly uh, concentrating to the very end of the policy cycle, meaning uh, changing how services are delivered, uh, twist, making the existing policy work better. But this was not what the Finnish government wanted because they wanted to be able to come up with even risky, uh, even radical policy ideas, uh, come up with uh, ideas together with their stakeholders and do systemic experimentation with the whole society. So that's why we didn't copy any of the models that already existed. We started, uh, we started doing something else. I like to think it this way, that uh, the existing, many of the top-notch experimentation models that exist, they are about puzzles. So you already have a policy, you have decided that this is our policy that we have, and then you use this experimentation as a tool to adjust the puzzle, adjust it to make it work better. And this is a beautiful thing, it's, it's a very important thing. But what Finnish government wanted uh, was to start painting. They wanted to start making policies through this new experimentation model, even radical ones, include people, uh, make it transparently, make it openly. So we wanted to make something that would enable this. So our approach in Finland uh, was to move from single experiments to a framework. A framework, it means that we are building the infrastructure that enables experimentation in governments. These are some of the elements that we've been building with the PMO and other actors in Finland. For example, the National Ethical Code of Conduct, uh, a digital platform that enables participation, uh, people, citizens giving their ideas for experimentation, actually experimenting on themselves. Uh, we've been established in forerunner networks, of course, guidelines, experimentation labs for providing support for the experimenters. Uh, there's also been an extensive media effort to tell, talk about the culture of experimentation. High-level leaders stepping up and saying, hey, now it's okay to fail, but you need to learn from it. All of these are needed uh, so that the actually public servants could start uh, experimenting in their everyday daily work in a decentralized way. So I would guess that I started from dating. I would say that these are kind of the main tricks that you need to know if you want to be successful in dating. You know, you need to find the right restaurant. You need to know how to make the first move and so forth. This is the crucial set that you need. <coughs> I think that one of the imp important things is here. So as I mentioned in the beginning, the government program is the highest political agenda in Finland. So there is an experimentation program inside this government program. There's a set of 27 experiments, and at the very end of the cycle, uh, the, all the experiments are evaluated, and ministers are going to give policy recommendations based on this evidence. But not only the policies are evaluated, but also this new way of making policy through experimentation. This new tool is evaluated, and as you see, there is an arrow to the next government program. So in the next government, um, when the next government takes over, they are, they are more equipped to use experimentation and evidence uh, than the earlier one was, because they have been learning from the mistakes that the earlier one did. Oops. Now I'm having technical problem. Can someone switch the slide? Okay. So just briefly, we did a model just to give you an idea how these policy experiments are actually run. This is a four-phase model. It's a really simple one. So in the first phase, when the policy design starts, you identify um, with the best, uh, you identify with the stakeholders. You open the policy design up for the stakeholders. You ask them, what if we want to make a sustainable, desirable policy? What are the central questions that need to be answered to, through experimentation? This is how you build co-ownership for your policy. You make it more accepted by, the, uh, by different stakeholders in society and also the end users. Second phase is quite uh, straightforward. It's about utilizing what you already, what the society already knows. Use the best experts, use the science. Do not reinvent the wheel. Do not experiment what you don't need to experiment on. Thirdly, learn fast, evaluate as you go. Uh, we've been doing one-day experiments, one-week experiments, not to get robust evidence at this point, 
but to fail fast, to learn fast, uh, in order to get rid of your bad ideas and proceed with the good ones. Lastly, you need to be patient. Only the good ideas survive here. Uh, you be patient, you explore it for three months, six months, one year, even two years, and you see how it well, it, well it actually works, get reliable evidence. Uh, now I'm having a problem again, can you switch? Okay, so these are some of the contexts that the government is experimenting at the moment. There are 27 experiments, for example, within education, mobility, employment, arts, and health. Uh, right now we are getting the results in two at the end of 2018 and then they will be translated into policy recommendations by the ministries and also by uh, through some stakeholder work and interpretation. You can switch the last slide. Okay. So <coughs> just to sum up, a couple of things that I've learned during the last three or four years working with different governments. If you want to mainstream public sector experimentation, which means try to get the big, big benefits out of it. Firstly, it's important to try to move from single experiments toward connecting experiments to the core activities of the government. I mean the everyday important things that are done in public sector, how laws are done, how policies are formulated, how projects are run in public sector. If you can integrate this fast learning type of doing in those processes, even a little bit, you can get huge benefits out of it. Second, I would say a little bit provocatively, forget the forerunners. There are always those three or four guys, uh, girls, who can do everything perfectly, and then those rest of those 50,000, they can't do anything. They don't want to do anything. So if you concentrate on the forerunners, you don't get the big change. You need to start to think how to move the middle. If you can move the middle at least a little bit, then it can be hugely beneficial. We are working on this in many contexts. Thirdly, uh, I would encourage not seeing users, citizens, as participants, not only at least. Try to see them as co-designers of policy, co-designers of services. That's how you understand what you are actually developing, uh, because you are already interacting at the very early phase. You are also building co-ownership. You are making these people to be part of your work. That's how things usually seem to be working better. Okay. That was all I have. Thanks for having me. Uh, I will be here until 4 o'clock today, so feel free to have a chat. Thank you.